A search for oil, which is good in terms of resources, it also encourages maximum present use, which is bad. Now, the worst of all worlds is to have the uh, uh, oil depletion allowance and keep saying that we're going to remove it because that compels the companies to hurry up and get the oil out of the ground. So uh, the first thing uh, would be to either decide we're not going to have it or to, uh, we're going to have it and leave it there. In the resource sense, clearly, it is preferable uh, to remove it and to uh, uh, allow uh, oil reserves to build up, provided uh, you are reasonably sure of one thing, of which uh, I have no uh, firm knowledge. If there were to be an alternative source of energy developed, say uh, some uh, uh, fusion process or very plentiful uh, energy from fission, it might turn out that we'll never have occasion to get all the oil out of the ground. Now, coal is very probably in that condition. Uh, we will go to uh, uh, fission energy and uh, fusion energy long before we've dug up all the coal so that this stuff, this valuable resource, will go unused. It would make no sense to conserve oil if uh, we had reason to anticipate that it was going to be superseded by something else. But the uh, uh, point that you're uh, uh, referring to is exactly right. Oil depletion is one of the issues that needs to be uh, uh, confronted in uh, looking at resource conservation. Yes, very good. As long as there is... Uh of uh, investment in the automobile industry. So in that, that sectoral process of would have uh, gotten, investment uh, in the automobile industry. So in that sectoral process you would have gotten a stabilization, cessation of growth in the automobile industry. Now if you multiply this across the board for all uh, kinds of activities, you reach some uh, level of output at which output no longer increases, and that's the end of growth. Yeah, uh, not easy, but I think doable. Uh, by the same token, uh, you could ask me, how do you know what level of uh, pollution is bearable? Uh, perfect clean cleanliness, cleanliness surely is never the answer uh, because people wouldn't want to pay what it takes to have perfectly pure air. They'll always put up with some uh, dirt in uh, order to get the cost down. So arbitrary judgments have to be made and it is quite true that uh, these judgments, these decisions must be made by someone. Now this someone presumably is the political process. In other words, we vote and our representatives in Washington pass legislation that say uh, pollution levels shall not exceed such and such and uh, then a technician is called in to say how high a tax is needed in order to get the level of uh, effluence from those and those companies down to such and such a level and that is how it would have to be done. You could also uh, use my auction process and say we're going to permit uh, a thousand tons of effluent, whatever that is, and uh, licenses for that are auctioned to the highest bidder and anybody who pollutes beyond that, of course, uh, gets uh, uh, penalized. It, it's a technical problem and a difficult problem, but I think not an Im impossible one. There's
is somebody here. Well, uh, this is a, another difficult problem. A colleague of mine at the Yale Law School has written learned articles about it, and we talk about it in uh, somewhat more mundane terms. Uh, if we have a neighbor who uh, runs his uh, stereo at excessive volume, should we pay him to uh, turn it down, or should uh, uh, he be uh, pay us to suffer the noise in order to be allowed to ru continue running it. Uh, it's the problem of entitlement. We call it property rights. Do I have a right to silence or does he have a right to noise? Does the, uh, the farmer have a right to water or does industry <coughs> uh, have a right uh, to the water the farmer previously had? Uh, ultimately, I think these things get settled by lawyers and I'm not one. Uh, I would assume that these are arbitrary decisions that are decided by voting and passing a law, not by a market process, and that's a pity. Whoever you, you can let the market process speaks, speak, it speaks anonymously, and there's no fight about it. It just uh, happens. Where you have to pass a law, there's a majority and a minority, and the minority is defeated and dis dissatisfied. But a solution can be found. This is a not unfamiliar situation in Washington. You have the regulatory agencies, and they are set up to, uh, to the ICC to control the railroads and the uh, uh, FTC uh, uh, to control the uh, 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 radio and TV stations and so forth. And in the end, it is usually said by the critics, they end up protecting not the consumer but the industry. Well, uh, if these uh, institutions were all that bad, presumably there would be a strong movement on foot to get rid of them, but I don't see that. There's always a movement to reform them, but never a movement that has concluded these things are wholly useless and we'd be better off without. So I conclude that while what you say is a, a real problem, uh, on the whole our political process uh, deals with it imperfectly, but nevertheless it deals. Right. Uh, I think uh, uh, you raise a kind of a administrative question there. Uh, what is to be done with the money that is uh, raised? First, uh, suppose that the uh, injury to the people downstream uh, was uh, particularly severe. Then you would raise the uh, pollution charge to a level at which the pollution would be uh, greatly reduced. Uh, if uh, there continues to be injury to the downstream uh, people. Uh, presumably, the government ought to use part or all of that money to compensate them. I don't think one can uh, establish a general rule uh, about this. There might 
be nobody downstream and yet uh, letting pollution go into the ocean might also be undesirable. But uh, that issue of uh, whether you should pay compensation to those injured or simply uh, take the money into the big general fund of the treasury uh, must be uh, confronted each time when there is a tax or a fee. Well, you know, the price system is regressive. The price system is a harsh thing, but we live by it. Uh, we can always overcome its effects by giving the people involved an income subsidy. Suppose uh, uh, something, uh, 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 the pollution fee uh, raises uh, the price of whiskey. Now you would say, well, that's pretty uh, rough, but nevertheless, if the price of whiskey goes up, we're not going to compensate the people who can't afford to drink whiskey anymore. If it happened to the price of bread, you would take a different uh, attitude. You would say people have to have uh, uh, bread, but there would still be the question, should you then compensate the buyers of the bread and give them cheap bread outright, or should you simply say, these people are now too poor to buy not only bread, but uh, other things they may have to cut back too. So what we do is give them some kind of income subsidy. This would be along the lines of uh, a, a negative income tax, a subsidy for the working poor. These things are now being uh, uh, proposed quite concretely. The important uh, point I'm trying to make is if you feel you've got to compensate somebody, it's better to give him money and let him do what he wants with it rather than give him some particular thing that seems uh, related to the damage that uh, occurred. Thank you very much, Henry. It was most provocative. Well, right, well, uh, very well. Uh, you think it went well, yes. Well, it was certainly very well.